Hey, it's that here. Butterflies. They're pretty, unique, full of color, and downright amazing. If you live in North America, as I do, one that stands out especially for its perplexing migratory journeys is the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly, Danaeus plexippus, belongs to the order Lepidoptera, which contains all butterflies and moths. The genus Danaeus encompasses all tiger, queen, wanderer, and monarch butterflies, and is named after the great son of Zeus and a mythical king and founder of Argos. The species named Plexippus is one of Danaeus's nephews, the son of his brother Aegyptus. As for the monarch designation, it is believed that it was in honor of King William III of England, which the butterfly's bright orange color reflected his secondary title as the Prince of Orange. Now, as I said before, the monarch has a pretty distinctive look with bright orange wings framed by black with white spots and a vein-like black pattern throughout the orange. The monarch has a black body with six legs like an insect, but only uses the center and hind pairs and has a proboscis or straw-like mouthpiece for sucking and consuming nectar. The combination of orange, black, and white is a very effective way of telling predators that it is poisonous. Yes, it is pretty distinct, with the exception of the copycat, the viceroy butterfly, which, while not actually being poisonous, looks almost identical to the monarch, especially to the untrained eye. This is why, whenever I see an orange butterfly that looks like a monarch, I won't say it's a monarch for certain. Here's a tip for the next time you do see what you think is a monarch. If you're able to see the top flat surface of the wing, look at the hind wing. The viceroy will have a black line going across the vein-like pattern close to the edge. If you don't see the line, then congratulations, you have a monarch. Now, monarchs have a wingspan of 8 to 10 centimeters or 4.5 to 5 inches, although this can vary as males are larger than females. In addition, the veins on a male are lighter and thinner, and males possess a black spot on their hind wings called the angiconia, in which butterflies use to disperse pheromones for mate selection. A monarch adult can live from 2 to 6 weeks in addition to the month of their development with exception of the final yearly generation, which can live as long as eight to nine months, but I'll get to that later. Distribution-wise, the monarch butterfly lives throughout North America from southern Canada down to Mexico, through Central America and the Caribbean islands, northern South America, as well as the Pacific islands and Australia. Some have accidentally ended up in the UK from a migration. Well, someone's internal compass was off. As for the habitat, they can reside just about anywhere as long as they access to water, the sun to warm up their wings for flight, relative shelter from predators, as well as access to food. Speaking of which, monarch caterpillars will feed exclusively on the leaves of different species of milkweed, as the sap of the milkweed is what makes monarchs so toxic, since the caterpillars are immune to it as they consume it. Adults, on the other hand, will feed on the nectar of not just milkweed, but lilac, goldenrod, thistles, and many other flowers. The life cycle of a monarch starts with the egg, which parents lay on milkweed leaves laying from 300 to 1,000 eggs. Eggs are cream-colored or light green and will take 3 to 8 days to hatch. When the eggs first hatch, the caterpillars are small and translucent green and will immediately feed on the milkweed, but must be careful not to get trapped and drown in the milkweed's latex sap. After a while, it will grow, developing a black, white, and yellow stripe pattern, as well as two pairs of tentacles one at the thorax near the head, and one on the abdomen on the other side of the body, with an overall body length of 2 to 4 centimeters. Nearing its larval stage, the caterpillar will spin a cocoon or chrysalis from which it will develop and mature into a full adult, transforming via metamorphosis. The breeding of monarchs is very much involved in their migration, as successive generations will breed on their way back from their wintering grounds. Monarchs from eastern North America will overwinter in either Florida or Mexico, where migrators from the north will breed and die. The first generation travels northwards and lands at their first stop. Here, they breed the next generation and die. The second generation will continue on the migration northwards and come to land at the second stop, where they will also breed and die. The third generation heads northwards, and you know where this goes. They stop, they breed, they die. This will continue over the whole summer, reaching to the upper parts of the monarch range, until fall comes around. When that time comes, the longest living generation will make their way back down to the winning grounds in the south, only to start the process anew with new generations. Now, speaking of the migration itself, it is unclear how the southbound migrators know where to go, as the generation migrating south is not the generation that returned from the wintering grounds, nor the previous southbound migrators. 
it's speculated that they may have some sort of internal compass that corresponds with the poles and the Earth's magnetic field, but nothing's for certain. What I found out from my annual behavior class is that monarchs are not true navigators, meaning if they are disoriented and moved to a different location, they couldn't reorient themselves and point in the new correct direction, as opposed to sea turtles, which are true navigators. In terms of conservation, monarchs are mainly affected when their habitat is affected. Because the monarch is so reliant on the milkweed as a host plant, with it being the chosen food source for caterpillars, any endangerment to the milkweed, such as applied pesticides, will affect the monarch. In order to help the monarch, I would advise planting milkweed for both caterpillars and the adults to feed on, and beautiful flowers like coneflowers, black-eyed susans, and goldenrod for the adults to consume nectar from, just to create a habitat or stopover for the little guys. Overall, monarchs are great. They're pretty recognizable and their migratory journey is pretty significant. So keep your eyes open in the spring and summer and you might see this black and orange butterfly. And just make sure it's actually a monarch. Pesky imitating viceroys. Thanks for watching. Stet out.